Are you a Microsoft Teams user and you want to control your meetings with your Stream Deck? Well, you're in the right place because today we're going to talk about your options for doing so, how to set them up, and what are a couple of things you should consider before you start using it. Now, if you are looking to control Teams, there are two options. One is the Teams plugin that you can download from the store, or you can program hotkeys. You can also do a combination, and I'll share why you might want to do that. If you're looking to have the plugin, you will want to go to the store, the Stream Deck store, and you can click install. You can find this plugin in business tools or simply search for Microsoft Teams. Once you download it, here's my software. You can see I have the plugin in the side. You'll see all of the options and let's take a close up look here. The first five are controls for the meeting, like turning off and on your camera or your microphone. And the final five are reactions. So it's somewhat limited, which is why you might want to supplement with hotkeys. But the first time you go to set this up, if you drag any key over onto your software, you're going to see this little lock symbol, this little red sort of warning sign. And if we look closer, it's that you need to connect your Stream Deck software with your Teams software using an API token. So where do we find that? Well, you're going to open your settings in Teams and click on privacy and your sidebar might look different depending on the type of plan you have. When you scroll to the bottom of privacy, you should see third party app API with an option to manage your API. When you click through, you will see an API token. It's blurred out in this example, but you are going to copy that token and then you can come back to the software. You can enter the token here and once it's connected, then you can drag and drop and add all of the actions you want. That's so simple, right? Not necessarily. Maybe you're like me and you actually are one of the users who cannot find that API token. And trust me, I've spent more time than I'd like to admit trying to troubleshoot this. I have even had people on their computer, I can see it. They sign in on mine, I can't see it. <laughs> so. It's just not guaranteed. And this is a known thing. There are multiple people like myself who cannot access this API token on their software. And yes, I have troubleshooted a lot, but there are also people who can see the API token on one day and then on another day is not there. So at the moment, at the time of this recording, it's fairly inconsistent and it won't necessarily be available to you. So what can you do? Well, let's go back to Let's go to Teams actually first, because there are two reasons you might want to use hotkeys. One, if you're like me and you can't access the plugin, but two, you might want to supplement your plugin with some hotkeys because if we open this menu here and say keyboard shortcuts, you will see if we scroll down that there are a bunch of shortcuts for meetings, calls, and calendar, and you might want something like open meeting chat, start screen share session. So there are things that are not available in the plugin that you might want to add in addition to what you have, or maybe you just want to use hotkeys only to set up your stream deck. If you're like me, <laughs> we go back to the software. I have actually set up a teams profile. These are actually hotkeys that I haven't necessarily programmed all of them, but for the demonstration, I have a hotkey here. This is for chat, opening the chat. And we know from looking at the keyboard shortcuts in the Teams settings that if I want to open the chat, I am going to do Command Shift R, Command Shift R. So I enter that hotkey here. Now I don't actually want to see the hotkey on the key here. Let's go to the live view so you can see it. I don't want to see that title. I could, if I wanted to, have chat so I can see chat, but I know that this is a chat bubble. So I am going to actually uncheck that. I do think it's a nice idea to add the title of your hotkey just in case you ever need to reference it. Now these keys themselves, this is actually just to launch Microsoft Teams. So this is using an open action. The rest of these right now are a single hotkey. And these icons are actually not from the plugin. These are icons that I designed myself. And also this icon pack is available as part of my Stream Deck Essentials course. But when it comes to these hotkeys, one thing you need to know is that a hotkey is going to work on Teams when Teams is the active application. In that case, you want to make sure that Teams is live before you press these keys. 
you could set up a simple two-step multi-action where the first step is make Teams the active application. And I know on a Mac, if you have open Teams, it will just bring it to the foreground. I just, I can't, I know sometimes Windows doesn't always work the same way. So maybe let me know in the comments how if open Teams will do the same thing on Windows. The first one though is bring it to the foreground. And then the second one is to launch that hotkey. So then you know when you press that button that Teams will be the active application. The other thing is that you want to make sure that you test your hotkeys in advance, not just because of the active application. So that's important. You wanna make sure that you're actually triggering the thing you want, which usually means that Teams has to be the active application. But you also wanna make sure that there isn't another hotkey for a different program that even if it's not in the foreground could still be activated. For example, when I was testing yesterday, I launched something in my password manager, even though it was not the active application. So you will want to test. Some software applications will allow you to modify their keyboard shortcuts. So you could maybe turn one off on one application. I do not believe you can modify Microsoft Teams shortcuts. So always, always test. If there is regular software you have running while you're in Teams meetings, do that, test the hotkeys while you've got your regular applications open. Also, if you are ever presenting, whether that's a browser, a document, or say PowerPoint slides, test your hotkeys with those as well. You just don't want any surprises while you are in a meeting. The second thing to consider is, should you use a smart profile? Now, smart prof profile in the Stream Deck means that when you have that application open, it will automatically change the profile. Let's take a look in the software. If I click on the profile menu and say edit profiles, I can see for Teams, right now it's not connected to anything. None of these profiles are connected to a default or an application. But I could say that I want this to connect to, let's bring this over here. I want this to connect to Microsoft Teams so that every time Teams is the active application, this Teams profile will show up on my Stream Deck. Now, in theory, this is wonderful. <laughs> in practice, in my experience, it's not always great because sometimes you want to be able to have access to a button and if you change applications, suddenly that button's not there anymore because you switched applications. So you will want to consider your workflows. Do you replicate a button on or a key on more than one profile? so that no matter if it switches or not, you still have access to a couple of keys that you want. For example, if you are using the plugin, the plugin will work with the application, with Teams, even if it's not the active window. For example, if you're sharing slides and maybe you need to cough, you could just press mute using the Teams plugin. Even if Teams is not your active window, maybe your presentation is, it will still work on that application. That's the beauty of using a plugin because they're connected even if it's not active. Hotkeys though are not like that. And so that's something you want to think about for yourself. You can also replicate a few keys on multiple profiles. For example, if you want that mute button on a presenting profile and you're doing your presentation, you can still use that plugin key to mute yourself even if Teams is not active. So those are some of the things that I want you to consider. Personally for me, I like to manually navigate between my profiles. I am not really an advocate for the application-based or smart profile, but that is very much a personal preference. But regardless of what you choose, I really hope that whatever you set up, whether it's a plug-in, the hockeys, or a combination, that it helps you to stand out in virtual meetings and presentations.